Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ is the rock of ages. The great I am. Our restorer. The resurrection and the life. Of gospel of John chapter 11. I call him the impossibility specialist. Because there is nothing impossible with him. Wave your hands unto him. Now present your petitions to him. Remind him those things you have written in your petitions. He is a miracle working God. Hi, Rima Karaba Sundurubu. Le makaraba shinde reproko sende le kribaya karandorobo le proko sundoro bro makayanda rabra makaskende le re makarandorobo sundoro bro mokoyende rebu makurinda rabba makasa He is the creator Created all things out of nothing. Ex nihilo. Through the spoken word. Even if you are here and you have sickness, which the doctors have said that is incurable, behold him. He has the spare pass to every pass of our body. He is ready to mold a new pass this night. He is the highest surgeon, highest gynecologist, divine and highest physician. Oh, Rima Karaba Sundurubu Makaranda Rabra Makaskinde. Yahweh Sabaoth will show up for you. I remember what happened to Hannah. Even when the whole world has branded Hannah a barren woman, this God of 11th hour showed up for her. Since he showed up for Hannah, he will show up for you. In the book of Genesis chapter 30, the word of God says that God of 11th hour remembered Rachel. Even when Rachel has given up all hope, the God of 11th hour showed up for her. Since he showed up for Rachel, he will also show up for you. He showed up for Rebecca. Rebecca was married to the house of Abraham even at old age. And Rebecca had ancestral manipulation. Even Abraham, they have this ancestral syndrome of barrenness in their lineage. But the God of 11th hour showed up for Rebecca. In your husband's house, you shall be fruitful. Because the God of 11th hour will show up for you. He showed up for Ruth and Naomi. There was a restoration time in their life. He showed up for them, therefore he will show up for you. He showed up for Sarah. Even when Sarah had crossed menopause, metamenopause, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of 11th hour showed up for Sarah. I announced to somebody here, this year, 2016, is going to be your year of sudden laughter. Stand up wherever you are and wave your hands unto him.
manufacture your own name this night call jesus your own name call him you have to manufacture your own name i hear you manufacture your own name Oh, mysterious God, unchangeable changer, he will not see your problem and change. He cannot change either in modality or in methodology. Holy Ghost confirm. Holy Ghost confirm. Holy Ghost confirm. In the name of Jesus Christ. Place your right hand on your head, everybody, and close your eyes. I release the wind of fruitfulness. As this message is going forth, I pray for the revival of the Holy Ghost in your life. And may the wind of fruitfulness flow. I release the anointing for fruitfulness upon somebody here. Yeah. For the scripture says, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth. I cancel anything like barrenness in your life. Yeah. Spiritual barrenness, physical barrenness. Rema karabo sondoro brokos kende. Some of us are dried up. Your business is dried up. Your family is dried up. I am locating somebody here in the blessings of Zachariah 10 verse 1. The scripture says pray for the letter rain. I am praying for divine irrigation that will water every dry conditions in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. You are in the presence of God therefore you cannot be dry. Only by shaking the rebel, a virgin encounters the presence of God and conceived. Therefore, as you are here in the presence of the Lord, I claim all and prosperity for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the sanctuary open for the scripture says in Zechariah 13 the fountain must flow to water the acacia, even the wadi shitin. I am praying for divine irrigation, O Lord. Father King of Kings, let there be a new rain, a fresh rain for super abundance unto your children. Father, I release uh, the river of Ezekiel chapter 47. In a vision, Ezekiel saw this river flowing down from the sanctuary. And the word of God says, uh, the moment this river entered the Araba, all the trees there became medicinal. There was a regeneration. Father, let there be a regeneration. Let the wind of fruitfulness flow. We hand this message over to you. As many that will hear this message, O oh Lord, may they tap that grace to be fruitful Amen. father may they tap that grace of abundance Amen. may they tap the grace of favor Amen. may they tap the grace of prosperity Amen. in the name of jesus christ Amen. close your eyes Father, let your glory come down. Rabasaka to the most second of all. Pala, Rebaka Sunday, Layerabos Kende, Rebaka Randorabo, Ebube, 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 Father, let your glory come down. Let your glory come down, O Lord. Let the wind and the anointing for fruitfulness flow. Hey! From today, barrenness is evicted, is rejected from your life in the name of Jesus Christ. 
in the name of the father son and the holy spirit Amen. touch on and say neighbor Amen. whatever that didn't submit to your father Amen. must submit to you now touch yourself and say, Nepal, Nepal. look at me. Oh. Look at me oh. I, must I must be fruitful. Whether Satan likes it or not, I must be fruitful. Now touch another and say, Nepal. Nepal, you are too small to stop my fruitfulness. Do you are worse? Do you are worse? Because I am moving higher. I am unstoppable. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now slap your neighbor high five and say, Neighbor, you are blessed. Neighbor, be fruitful. Or you slap 10 persons around you high five and say, Be fruitful. Be fruitful. Be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ. Now open your Bible, book of Genesis. Chapter 1 from verse 26. In the name of Jesus Christ from barrenness to fruitfulness that is our topic this night neighbor you must be fruitful can i hear a thunderous hallelujah so in this message we are praying for all run fruitfulness most often, whenever fruitfulness is made men mentioned, our mind runs straight toward child bearing. This time around, we are talking about fruitfulness in totality. You must be fruitful. The word of God says, Okay, we read from verse 27. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Hallelujah. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. It is a command. Does that mean that God has ordained fruitfulness for his children? Am I communicating here? God says, be fruitful. He has ordained fruitfulness for us. It is a command to be fruitful. Not only that, the scripture says, Fill the earth and subdue. That means to walk in dominion. We have the authority to walk in dominion. God has ordained fruitfulness for his children. He has ordained increase for his children. Therefore, it is in the mind of God to be fruitful. Remember, every word of God in this book of law must surely come to pass. Am I communicating here? That's why the scripture says in Isaiah 55, verse, verse, 5, verse 10 following. The scripture says, This word shall not go back void. Just the same way, after that Paul, there is no way it can go back. The word of God can never go back without actualizing the purpose for which it is sent. Now, let's say my dear people of God. Always look for the word of God to hold on to in the time of tribulation. Your problem is settled in the word. Always know that the mind of God is made known to us through the word. The will of God is communicated to us through the word. Am I communicating here? 
Even the person of God is revealed through his word. That's why the scripture says in Johanan Prologue, in Gospel of John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, everything was created through the word, and the word was God. Everything was created through the word. Creation through the word. Let there be this. It came to pass. Amen and amen. amen. So anything that is not favorable for you or not in accordance to God's design plan in your life, use the word of God and do what? And create. Most often, you submit your application for job and they say what? No opportunity. Use the word of God and create opportunity. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Word of God. Word of God. Now, God is highly obligated to obey his own word. But he is not highly obligated to obey your own word. That is the reason for you to look for the word of God to hold on to. Maybe you are believing God for the fruit of the womb. Look for prophecies in the book of law, in the Bible, where God has said, No woman in your life shall be barren. God, I hear you. Let your word manifest. Look for a word of God to hold on to. Maybe you are finding it difficult financially. You are among those that hustle like elephant and harvest like ants. Look for the word of God where the scripture says in Psalm 35 verse 27, I take pleasure in the prosperity of my people. God, I hear you. Let prosperity manifest. Amen, amen and amen. amen. God is not highly to uh, is, is not obligated to obey your own word. But he is highly obligated to obey his own word. Therefore, if you are here and you are experiencing barrenness, the scripture says what? Be fruitful. It's not your own word. It is the word of God. Therefore, I am lifting this word. It is a command. It is a promise. And this promise is our hope. I lift this word up as I release fire that will crush every barren condition in your life. Yeah. Child of God, you cannot be barren in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. What you need to do is to enforce a prophecy. Enforce your fruitfulness. Enforce God's promises. I said yesterday about carrying promises and die like that. We tell the promises of God made be made manifest in our life. It because we are passive. If you do what you're supposed to do, heaven has no option than to do what they're supposed to do. If you fulfill a code, heaven has no option than to open the windows of heaven for a blessing. Our God is a miracle worker. But you must believe God who climb and sinker. That is the power of faith. Let me tell you, power of faith is all about believing the word of God who climb and sinker. That the good Lord has said, be fruitful, you do what? I grab it. That the good Lord has said, you, you shall be the head and not the tail, you do what? I grab it. That the good Lord has said, you shall not die prematurely, you do what? I grab it. Our mother Mary said it. Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your wills. That means let it be done to me according to my faith. Hallelujah, somebody. Enforcing your fruitfulness. To be fruitful is to experience breakthrough. Is to experience breakthrough. There cannot be fruitfulness when you are operating under a closed heaven. No way. Breakthrough is an access to your fruitfulness. And breakthrough is defiling human limits, speculations, calculations, and predictions. Defiling human limits. Speculations. Defiling human calculations and human predictions. If God can do for you what you can do for yourself, then you don't need God. But we need him because he can do for you what you cannot do for yourself. So, for you to experience fruitfulness, maybe 
you have been experiencing an invisible demonic line drawn against your destiny that has reduced you, that has pinned you down to the state of barrenness. You need divine intervention. That's why you need to approach the sanctuary of the Lord. That's why we are here. We are here because there are certain things we can do for ourselves. That's why we are praying for divine intervention. We are here the Holy Ghost of God will make us better. We are here to enjoy, to remind God that we are his children. To praise God, to worship him, and to enjoy the benefits. Amen and amen. amen. No wonder the scripture says in Isaiah 61 verse 7. Instead of your shame and demotion, because you are my son, I will give you double portion. Double portion awaits you. Father said it today when he was beginning starting the mass, he said, Where we have gathered this mass in the heavenly Jerusalem, where millions of angels have gathered for the festival, and everybody here is a firstborn son. Deuteronomy chapter 21, verse 17, the scripture says, The right and portion of every firstborn son is worth double. Double portion. I claim double fruitfulness for you. Double fruitfulness for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Some of us who have been using uh, our monthly devotional, Divine Touch, may have seen one woman, Mrs. Senemo. Yeah. A woman that delivered quintuplet, five. It be sound up where my marriage means. Amen and amen. The doctor told her, woman, listen. There is, there is no way you can't conceive. One day, the woman was there, so, you know, very, very smart. He was able to beat the stewards and all that. Right, I was about to, you know, start the mass after ministration at the ministry. All of a sudden, what I heard, wow, she was drawing my clothes. Right at the altar. Oh, the guy adoration, who care, what even the weaver? The crowd and all that, still was alone and all that. Yeah. Workers, ministry workers is, is more, more than this crowd here. The workers alone. So, she was so clever. The way she penetrated, I, I, you know, she said, Father Abraham, so my word is finished. Father, listen to my ugly report. You know, by then, the steward and the mama servers, they came to, you know, to put I told them, leave her, leave her. She started crying. Father, they have arranged another woman for my husband. Because of my condition. Father, I am your daughter. I listened to one of your talk, where you say that with God, nothing is impossible. Father, you belong so challenge your God on my behalf. She was crying. I told her, listen, because you embarrass a man of God before the altar, before my own throne, because altar is what? My own direct office. Hey, because you embarrass a man of God, heaven will embarrass you with children. Amen, somebody. Before you know it, after that encounter, two months later, she took in. After nine months, hey, on the day of delivery, there was the hold up. The whole Umpon Newi, the whole teaching hospital in Newi stood there. For, they were so, so lucky, you know, that day, that very day, they ranked and I pick, and the sister said, Father, the hour has come. She's in the theater now. I was with my phone all through. And reports, we are coming. Father, I said, Amen. Holy Ghost, confirm. Father, second one, don't come out. Oh. Holy Ghost, confirm. Father, third one, Holy Ghost, confirm. Father, fourth one, Holy Ghost confirm. Father, fifth one. Le makaso kundurubu. Le makarabasende rebrokoskende. Amen and amen. 
20 plus with heart operation. She delivered her baby like Hebrew woman. I want to tell somebody here. With God, nothing is impossible. In fact, I am claiming mega testimony for somebody. Mega miracle for somebody here listening to this message. In fact, if you are believing God for the fruit of the womb, if you are believing God for the fruit of the womb, just stand up wherever you are. If you are believing God for the fruit of the womb, just stand up. Close your eyes. I use this testimony as a point of contact. I am praying for a breakthrough. Defiling human limits and calculations. Even doctors report. You have a promise, daughter of Zion. You have a promise, child of God. The scripture says, be fruitful. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. Be fruitful. Amen. Just close your eyes wherever you are. Hey, I am praying for the touch of the master. Hey, hey. It doesn't matter what the doctors have said. You are here because there are certain things you can't do for yourself. That's why we are praying for divine intervention. What a great testimony. I remember the day she was giving testimony. The same place, the same altar where she wept. Was well, the same altar where she stood and was laughing. Say, Father, the monster, your God has wiped my tears. I call on DJ Gabriel. Let the mighty for foot to this flow. Holy Ghost, take over. Anointing, take over. Take over. Take over. Take over. Father, begin to touch your daughters one by one. Father, touch them one by one. Touch them one by one. Father, touch them one by one. Almighty and living God, let the wind of fruitfulness flow. I release the anointing for fruitfulness upon your children here, upon your daughters here. Father, let the anointing for miracles, signs, and wonders flow. Father, touch them, touch them, touch them, O oh Lord. Touch them, O oh Lord, touch them, O oh Lord. I release the fire that will crush every demon of barrenness in your life. You cannot be barren. For the moment he's saying today, you cannot be barren. By the anointing power of the Holy Ghost, holy my shaking day. I prophesy, I prophesy all around fruitfulness unto somebody here. I prophesy, I prophesy. Oh, 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 total fruitfulness. By this time next year, you will be with a child. <laughs> Where are they? Holy Ghost, give me a sign. I can see a Gabriel carrying twins. Let somebody receive under the anointing. Power. Yes, my Lord. Yes, my Lord. Yes, my Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Take it. Help them. Help them. Help them. Rabaka Sundarabo. We broke a Sundar broke a skin day. Rama ye kendere broke a I prophesy twins. Oh, if from a man I said. I prophesy to us. If from a man I say, I prophesy to us. If from a man I say, I prophesy to us. If from a man I say, by the power of the Holy Ghost, let the anointing flow. Oh, to us, to us, to us, to us. Carry your own. Carry your baby. Carry your baby. Carry your baby. Carry your baby. Carry it. Carry your baby. Fire. Anything the enemy has planted in your womb, let the fire of the Holy Ghost open. Effeta, 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 effeta. Hey, let that 
carry womb to open. Remo sende. Hey! Spiritual husband. Fire. Rabba sunde. Fire. Ole ma ye kende rebo sunde. Every demon causing miscarriage. Spiritual husband. Every demon causing miscarriage. Every demon causing miscarriage. Every demon causing miscarriage. Let that demon hear my voice and leave. Fire. Le boko sokende rebo. Le boko sunde. Le yere le boko sende le bo. Le yere bo makarende le boko sende. Le indara ba makarende le boko sende. Let the fire for fruitfulness come. Let the fire of fruitfulness come. Oku, 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 oku. They will call you mother of twins. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. May we be seated. Amen and amen. No matter where you are today, irrespective of environment, even if you have nobody to help you, we have a covenant of blessing and the fruitfulness in Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. In Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 16, the word of God says, You did not choose me, rather I chose you. To go and bear fruit. In Gospel of John 15, verse 8, the scripture says, That you may bear much fruit. This is the will of my father. This is the will of my father. That you bear much fruit. Oh, you must be fruitful. Amen. You must be fruitful. Amen. My people, where they think you will stop, you will go beyond that level. Amen. I said you will go beyond that level. Amen. Most often, because of privileged information people have about us, they have, you know, drawn a line for us. This is where they will end because of privileged information. Because of privileged information, people may have drawn your conclusion. Just like in the time of Christ, can anything good come out from out of Nazareth? Can anything good come out from this family because of privileged information? In the life of Christ, Jesus Christ was busy realizing goodness. Can anything good come out from Nazareth? Most often they said what? Insignificant Bethlehem. But I want to tell somebody here, for every insignificant Bethlehem, Jesus Christ must be born. For every insignificant Bethlehem, Jesus must be born. Maybe they have your privileged information. I want to tell you, you are going to cross that level. You must be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Any limitation placed on your life must be broken. Amen. You must break that household cocoon. Amen. Maybe in your family, maybe you are known for barrenness. In the sense that demon or spirit of barrenness has been running through your blood lineage. It is ancestral. In your family, they have these big aunties. They are married with their children. And because of that, they lose that marriage. Your own case is different. I repeat again, where they think you will stop, you will cross that level. In the name of Jesus Christ. Today, you must discover fruitfulness. Shout, I must discover fruitfulness. I must, I must be fruitful. Confess positively. I must be fruitful. I said you must discover fruitfulness. Can somebody shout fire? fire. I thank God for my co-father day. He discovered electricity. I thank God for Thomas Edison. He discovered the electric bulb. I thank God for Isaac Newton. He discovered the law of gravity. I thank God for Vasco da Gama. He discovered the Suru to India. I thank God for Christopher Columbus. He discovered the Suru to America. I thank God uh, for you that is hearing my voice today. You must discover fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. Shout power. 
Wekrebo Sundoro Boko Sekende. Linkrema Sandoro Bo Makarandoro Boskende. Lerebo Sundoro Bo Sunderebo Makarandoro Bo. In the name of Jesus Christ. God has ordained fruitfulness for you. Therefore, in this you are covenant right. It is a command to be fruitful. Amen and amen. Fight of the devil is at the gate of fruitfulness. Fight of the devil is always at the gate of fruitfulness. In Gospel of Mark chapter 11 verse 14, Christ caused the victory because he didn't meet up his need. Christ caused the victory. Christ was hungry. He saw the victory. He had every hope at least that, that he will get some fruit from the fig tree. On getting to the fig tree, he discovered that fig tree was unable to produce any seed. And Christ caused the fig tree out of annoyance. Some of us here, we have not been able to bear fruit just like the fig tree that enjoy all the mineral nutrients, all the chlorophylls, and was barren. Some of us here, Your parents have invested so much on you. You are now a graduate and you are still their prayer point. You have nothing to show. You are totally barren. I lift my anointed hands up as I cause any barren situation in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Life become worth living when you are evidence. When you are an evidence, life become worth living. Amen and amen. amen. Everything that will not allow you to be fruitful must be swallowed. Amen. Can somebody shout for the Ebermon so I hear you? Amen. Your parents have invested so much on you. At their own age, may they find food in your life. Amen. May they find food from you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, any time the devil wants to deprive you of your fruitfulness, he projects three circumstances. Whenever he wants to deprive what? Fruitfulness from your life, he projects three circumstances. Number one, inherited evil ancestral background. Inherited evil ancestral background. This has to do with our evil background and foundation. I call this foundation Lazarus situation. Lazarus situation. Inherited evil background. In the gospel of Luke chapter 16 verse 20, a figure was presented to us in the person of Lazarus. The scripture says, the Lazarus normally stays at the gate of the rich man. A beggar. The scripture says, there was a beggar named Lazarus. Covered with sores. And longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table even the dogs came and licked his sores lazarus condition first lazarus gospel of luke chapter 16 verse 20. some of us are like lazarus we are helpless we go about begging feeding from what fell from people's table we are picking crumbs we are rash you are destined for greatness you have been enthroned spiritually. You have been enthroned to enjoy God's blessedness. But what is happening in your life? You are dry. Another Lazarus in the scripture, Gospel of John chapter 11. The scripture says there was a man named Lazarus. A man named Lazarus. And the scripture says Lazarus was sick and died. He was sick and died. In the sense that he didn't achieve anything before his exit. <laughs> Lazarus was a low. He didn't even achieve anything. Can anybody tell me any achievement of Lazarus? If in the scripture said that he was fighting with his sisters, Mary and Martha, in the same room, one room. Oh my God. I reject every Lazarus condition in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Lazarus was barren. Financially, barrenness. He couldn't achieve anything. 
some of us your condition has become your identity in such a way that when people want to talk about you they say that barren woman that woman living you know at the back who has been believing god for the fruit of the womb before 40 years that childless woman that young man who has stayed in the land of uk for donkey years without visiting their village that is your condition has given you a name just like that man at the pool of beside her the name was not mentioned because that condition has branded him a name he has been there for donkey years 38 good years that's why the scripture says a man at the pool of Bethsaida. In Gospel of March chapter 5, a hemorrhagic woman. The name was not you know, mentioned because she had been in that situation for a relatively long time. So whenever people want to talk about, in this, about her, they say what? That hemorrhagic woman. Oh my God. Any evil appellation or tag in your life must expire this night. I am praying for a right identity. Always remember that a wrong identity makes you a non-entity. But a right identity makes you a celebrity. Never you accept defeat. What you permit, you permanent. Reject barrenness. Reject it. Ha. Even poverty. Reject poverty. Reject it. Hey, we are talking about fruitfulness in totality. Let me tell you, if you are poor, you make yourself a slave. You simply, you are simply what a slave. Another person will dictate your timetable for you. Yes. If you are poor, you are reduced to the position of what slavery. And people will start dictating, dictating your timetable. In case, okay, for instance, you have an appointment with your friend to catch up with. Maybe wedding and all that. You schedule time. Maybe around 6 o'clock. Both of you agreed. 4 o'clock. You are already set for the appointment. You will now visit your friend. Maybe you have no ride. You have no car. And your friend has. On getting there, your friend is still sleeping. You will say, oh, what are you still doing, my friend? Have you forgotten that we have an appointment to catch up with at, by, at, at six? He said, oh, Ah, don't worry. I know, I know. Please come, let me help me. Let me cook food for my husband. With all your good attire, you enter the kitchen. And you will be maybe peeling ogo or okra for her. Because you have no car. You have to wait for her. So you walk according to her own timetable. I release the power for you to be rich. Anointing for you to be rich. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you want God to bless you, explosive blessing. Oh my God. Learn how to invest in the house of God. Learn how to sow seed of faith. I as a priest, eh? Father Chris can testify. Even at, uh, 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 at five years a priest, I've given out 14 SUVs, Jeep to people, fellow priests and all that. St. Paul will say, imitate me as I imitate Christ. But, but I love to be good and all that. Yes. I can government of an, I can government and scholarship students and all that. It's not for you to brand me, hey, good man. But I'm telling you what, secret of success, secret of favor. Every year, not less than 15 million. I spent 15 million in a hospital apostolate. 
The measure you give is the measure you receive. Ha. Ebu mo so bo agalanya. Eji me go me anya lo mo agbonya aka. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. The measure you give is the measure you receive. Learn how to invest in the house of God. We are still coming to that. We are talking about fruitfulness. 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 You must be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ. So we are talking about inherited evil ancestral background. Inherited evil ancestral background. Most often what we are suffering is what, what we inherited. From our forefathers, evil background. Why is it that where others go and get favor, you go there and you are disappointed? And you try so much to maintain a right relationship with God. Why is it that from time to time you are facing disappointment? I wonder. Inherited evil background. Remember the case of Reuben. Reuben was the first son, the first son of Jacob. But he did not achieve anything. He was barren because he defied his father's bed. Why is it that most often, firstborn always suffer misfit? Firstborn supposed to inherit the first blessing. But in the scripture, most often, even in our own time, most often, firstborn, they suffer so much. Absalom. Remember, Ammon was the first son of David. First son was killed by Absalom because he committed incest, firstborn. Do you know that Manasseh was the firstborn of Joseph? But faith was against him. Nowadays, whenever we want to refer to uh, Ephraim and Manasseh and Ephraim, we normally say Ephraim and Manasseh. But in actual fact, Manasseh was the first son. The very day Joseph presented his sons to in the book of Genesis chapter 48, he presented his sons to Jacob, they are his father, to bless. Joseph did the right calculation as the cost on the mind. He placed Manasseh at the right because the first son is supposed to receive the father's blessing from the right. And the second son from the left. Jacob raised his sons up in thanksgiving. In bringing down the two hands, there was what? He crossed his hand like this. And Joseph protested and said, no, father, this one is the first. Place your right hand on the head. And Jacob said, no, this is how nature, this is how God has destined it to be. Okay, from now, the senior one will serve the younger one. Even when Joseph protested, most of firstborn, they suffer misfit. Even David, Eliab was the first son of Jesse. But the mantle of kingship fell on David instead of the first, Eliab. That's why Eliab was jealous and annoyed with the, this little boy, David. Firstborn. Our sister Leah, Leah was the first daughter of Laban. But Jacob fell in love with Rachel. Instead of Leah, the first daughter was rejected. First, firstborn. Firstborn. So many of them. So many. So many. First. Firstborn. If you are a firstborn, stand up. Close your eyes, every firstborn. Rambo Korobo Sende Le Yirima Karandorobo Le Proko Sende Le Bo Shinde Rebro Moko Yende Yende Rebo Makarandorobo Mo Yerebo Koskende Rebo Makaskenderebo. As a firstborn, you're supposed to enjoy the first fruit. You are the direct hair apparent. Why must you lose that crown? Look at what happened to Rehoboam. Rehoboam was the first son of Solomon. Look at. He couldn't organize the kingdom handed over to him. He was careless. And the kingdom was battered. 
Ray Macassandorobo. Recurrendorobo. You will not suffer misfit. Because you are here in this program. Anybody working against your destiny. Holy Ghost of God must fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody shout, Oh God. Oh God. Let my opportunity not pass me by. Lord, let me not miss my opportunity. Lord, let me not miss my opportunity. Lord, let me not lose my opportunity. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, my devil of God. There is no empty opportunity or vacuum opportunity. Promised land was not an empty land. It was occupied. For you to enter your promised land, get ready to fight the Anakims. We are talking about vacuum virgin circumstance. As one of the factors that fights our fruitfulness, militates against our fruitfulness. Every promised land has a giant. Am I communicating here? So for you to enter your promised land, get, get ready to fight the giant. One opportunity can rewrite the history of your family. One opportunity can rewrite the history of your family. That is my prayer for you. That in this land of UK, oh, remark that the good Lord will give you an opportunity that will change your story. Yeah. Somebody shout, Abraham, I hear you. Yeah. Now, point number three. Process without a product. Process without a product. When devil wants to frustrate your fruitfulness, he will give you a long process without a product. Long process without a product. That is the spirit of almost there but not there. Near success syndrome. At the verge of giving testimony, people will hear but. Bet. 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 I almost carried through. Remember that the gap between success and failure most often is in, in what? Almost. Almost. Process without a product. Are you married? No, I'm in a relationship. Two years, I'm in a relationship. Process without a product. Three years, I'm in a relationship. And they are carrying one tiny ring, engagement ring. I am engaged. Four years, I'm in a relationship. Process without a product. Let me tell you. Whether courtship, engagement, and all that. Hey, that have exceeded maybe six months. Danger. Danger signal. You better throw away that thing called engagement ring and find meaning out of your life. Endless engagement. Amen and amen. Don't allow anybody to tie you down in the name of engagement. Process without a product. And he continued giving flimsy excuses and all that and all that and all that. Before you know it, you start aging. Let me tell you, hey, women, young girls here, The moment you reach your peak, what will happen? You'll start coming down. After crescendo, the Kasum, diminuendo, you'll start coming down. And tomorrow, that guy will see another person. Don't allow people to mess you up. Be wise. Stand your ground and face future boldly. 
Because future holds great for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Stop carrying endless engagement rings. Many a times it comes in form of procrastination. Process without a product. I will start my building this year. Okay, in fact, let me make more money. No, up a year. In fact, let me make more money. Next two years. You continue to, you know, procrastinating. Before you know it, one problem will land and do what? <laughs> Fizzle the whole money. You start afresh. That is demonic strategy. To make you suffer without having anything to show. You are loaded with powerful sophisticate without profit. Devil is trying to make you busy without business. You work a helter skelter. That is busy. Two, four, seven. You are busy. That is demonic way to frustrate you, to frustrate your fruitfulness. Giving you flimsy excuses. Not for you to be useful. Amen and amen. amen. Activity without productivity. Fight of the devil is at the gate of fruitfulness. You have stayed so much on this level, on this mountain. The Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 6 says what? It is time to break camp and move on. Every day you're supposed to be you know, going higher and higher and higher. You're supposed to top up something. That is what it means to do what? To exist. Hallelujah somebody. God who told the Israelite. Moses, you have stayed so much on this mountain. It is time to break camp and move on. After this crusade, you are moving higher. Yeah. But spiritually, you must add something to your spiritual life. Yeah. Maybe initially, you used to read one chapter of the Bible every week. This time around, you need to make it up to three chapters every week. Maybe initially, you find it difficult. Maybe you save five decades of rosary every day. After this program, make it ten decades. Maybe initially, you used to visit the prison, motherless baby, once every year. This time around, you must make it at least once in two months. Something in you must do what? Must, you know, come up. Come up, my people. Come up. After this crusade, maybe last year, you were not able to make much gain. The wind of favor must surely come. You start saving up. Somebody shout to you, I hear you. Some of us here always having suitors with your wedding. Suitors with you all the time, all the time. Oh my God. Spirit of almost there. To almost make it is not to make it. Remember, nearly does not kill a bird. The difference between accomplishment and failure. And that between champions and losers is oftentimes measured with almost. However, almost is just a sure sign that with a little improvement, you can make it. Small adjustment can make you the top, the top, if you don't give up. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't give up. Don't stop at almost, persevere. Don't stop at almost, persevere. Can I hear a thunderous hallelujah? I said yesterday that everything happens according to the level of your faith. Only believe. Only believe. Believe God. Only believe. Only believe. Faith. Our brother Abraham. Isaiah chapter 51 from verse 2 following. The scripture says, look at your ancestor Abraham. And Sarah could give birth to you. Abraham was one man when I called him. But when he answered, I made him father of many nations. Abraham, leave your countrymen, leave your country to the land that will show you. Abraham answered what? Yes, sir. Out of that obedience, great nation was born. Out of that obedience, great nation was born. Faith. Point number six, genuine hunger to bear fruit. That is what? Being passionate. 
being passionate. 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 Genuine hunger to bear fruit. The testimony of Hannah in 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 5. Those who we are full, hire themselves out for food. But those who we are hungry, hunger no more. She who was barren has born seven children. But she who has had many sons pines away. That was the parable or the testimony of Hannah. Genuine hunger to bear fruit. This is the prayer of Hannah. It tells us the need to really hunger for what we ask for. In other words, it has to be a genuine desire. Genuine desire. We saw in Genesis, Rachel's genuine desire to have children. Genesis 30 verse 1, when Rachel saw that she was not bearing Jacob any children, she became jealous of her sister Leah. And she got hold of Jacob and said, give me children or I die. Give me children or I will die. Hunger. We need that same kind of passion and hunger for spiritual children. We need that kind of hang hunger and passion. Jesus was so effective in his ministry because he has a genuine longing for souls. God loved David so much. He called David a man after my own heart because he had genuine longing and hunger for God. In Psalm 69 verse 9, David said, Oh Lord, the passion I have for your house has eaten me up. Even the day he was called to be enthroned, he was near the still water, releasing sweet melody unto the Lord. When brothers came looking for him, they saw uh, animals. We are there, we are grazing, but they didn't see David. David was beside the still water. That was when David composed Psalm 42. They can wear lace at your million gang. Ubin na chogi o nyemwim. Nanigi ka ubin na chong. A choromi peregin. Jerry Hunger. And God called him a man after my own heart. Most of you are believing God for your fruitfulness, but you are not passionate. That genuine hunger is not there. Many a time, it is as a result of demonic trap. Open your covenant oil. Yeah. There is nothing like barrenness in your life anymore. Yeah. What you need to do is to do what is to enforce that fruitfulness and say, God, I must be fruitful. God, I cannot be barren. This word of God says in Isaiah chapter 32, verse 15. Until the spirit of God is poured upon us from on high, desert will turn into an orchard, an orchard into a fruitful forest. I want to tell somebody here: maybe you are helpless, you can you can't help yourself anymore. Until the spirit of God is poured upon us from on high, desert will turn into an orchard, an orchard into a fruitful forest. That spirit is the power of 